How are y'all? Steve, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we just saw that, uh, that fun, riveting uh, ending there. Um, we were talking a little bit backstage. Uh, you saw, you've seen the pilot. You've seen the pilot yeah. um, since yeah. then. And we yes. were watching it kind of uh, awkwardly backstage there as well uh, yeah. on the screens there. Uh, tell us about the show. Tell us about uh, how you got involved with it. Um, it. It's super exciting to have another kind of uh, fun little twist on that sci-fi genre um, on network TV. So I'd love to hear just sort of how you got involved with the production and, you know, where and how you're feeling about it and, you know. Well, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a sci-fi guy. I really, I, I really, um, I've never have been. I, 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 um, I don't know what it is. I just, I'm, I'm you know, if, if there was any genre, they'd be like, you know, westerns or, you know, my favorite sci-fi movie would, you know, if I was asked, I'd, I'd say like The Dead Zone. Oh you yeah, know, yeah, Chris yeah, Walken. Yeah. But it's based in reality. Some, you know, if it's a world that I have to all of a sudden believe is normal, and then and then understand characters like that. Okay, they all live on spaceships. You know, I just don't. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Um, I read this pilot, and I was I was uh, not working for for a long period of time. I took some time off because I had I'd done a show down in Puerto Rico, and then. Um, and that was hard. And then went went on to Planet of the Apes. And so I'd worked for like a year straight, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I took some time off and I was just reading scripts. And, and you know, I was reading movies and stuff that were coming in that, that I really did, didn't like. <laughs> didn't do anything for me. And I read this and I was surprised that, that it was, a, that it was a, a, a network show. Yeah. And... Um, Really liked the writers, and I thought it. I thought it was a really interesting premise, and real simple and grounded. Small town. Um, I liked the aspect of the refugees. I thought that was really fascinating. Them coming to here, but coming to the same place. Yeah, it's interesting. And and the writers had really done a lot of research and work on kind of and you see a little bit of it in the in the pilot but it really it gets a lot more in depth about just you know like um ge genetic enhancement where that's going and how how that's being um um played with now in science which is really kind of scary in, in a weird way and like w you know in a hundred years like are we how is that going to change us and how you know our immunity or whatever. I mean, do we live longer? Um, also, the little things, they, they were talking to like NASA and stuff, like asking them um, how far ahead would the possibility of, you know, time travel is a hard thing to grasp. Uh, um, is it, I mean, it can't be possible, right? It's, it's almost something that we like to think of it as being possible. And they... They said, well, if it could happen, is that like 500 years? We look at the, and they said, no, 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 that's like 130. That's like 150. Yeah. Um, it's scary when you get the NASA guys saying that, right? You're like, oh, man. Yeah, they, exactly. <laughs> but there's, you know, the characters are like, is this real meat? Is this animal meat? Right, yeah. Like they don't eat meat. You know, it's genetically... Well, it's interesting when things are moving, how fast things are moving now with technology, like you said, in science. That Who knows, right? In 150 years, this could be a, a real situation. And I like what you said about how this show, um, at least to start, you know, in the pilot, we've only seen one episode, um, feels like it could be, it's based in reality. Like, this could potentially happen. Um, and, and we're seeing these people, you know what I mean, in this day and age, like experiencing these people coming from the future. Right, yeah, no, I... I um... Again, it's 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 yeah, it's grounded, real, yeah. and and in in the episodes they don't um, they linger here. It's it doesn't go crazy and and run off real fast. There's a lot of things that go on and a lot of things that happen that are really interesting. Um, but it it takes place within a, a couple weeks, you know, and it really kind of is. This is where it ha you know the, the this season is right here. Yeah. You mentioned... Um, Which I like. Yeah, for sure. 
You mentioned the science. Uh, there's also a little tinge um, of uh, social commentary as well. Uh, there's a great line from one of the, the refugees who says, oh, don't worry, we're back here in this time where everyone is treated equal. And I know, <laughs> I know when I saw that, I chuckled yeah, to I myself. Oh my gosh. Yeah, how bad is it? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that, they're, yeah, that they're worse than where we are wow. right now. Yeah. We're in the time of peace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the cool thing about it too. It's it 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 doesn't. I mean, it doesn't comment too much on the refugee. It doesn't become political. Sure. It, it, there's a little bit here and there, but but it's it's you know it is what it is. Which yeah, is pretty prominent. But um, it yeah. feels like it's. And again, if this spoils anything, we don't want to give any spoilers away. Okay. But well. Yeah, I mean, and just in terms of the rest of the scene, it feels like it's in sort of a uh, nebulous time. Like, you know, we're in our time, but it's not necessarily going to be related to specifics of, like, what's going on in our politics right now. It, it no, feels, no, no. yeah, it, which, which, which is nice. We need a little escapism here and there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's really about the small town and how they deal with it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, you know how, how long does it take for me to actually be convinced that these people are time travelers? <laughs> I mean, for real? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then when I, when I, I have to believe it because they're sincere. And then how to, you know, and then I deal with things, personal life, and, you know, I pick the wrong town to go v to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get my shit Classic, together. classic uh, big city cop moves to the small yeah. town and has to deal with the time travelers. <laughs> uh, but you said, I mean, it is about the characters, you know, and, and it feels like it's going to be really about these, these characters. What an well, amazing I mean, cast of, uh, you know, just people, you know? Yeah, it's a, gr yeah. it's a great group of actors. I mean, it really isn't a character-driven show. It's an idea-driven show. Sure. But it needs, everything needs character. I mean, we kind of loosely use the term. It's character-driven, like everything's an ensemble. It's not. Not everything is, and not everything is character-driven, and that's okay, as long as there are good characters. Right. And Makes as sense. long as they let the work that we did on set, it, as long as we get to see that. Now, remember, it goes through a whole process after, you know, we're, we're pretending on the day. <laughs> and that can be really frustrating. I mean, that's, that's, that's a very daunting thing with anything you do. Yeah. And especially with something like this, it's like, I'm as curious as anyone. I'd love, you know? I'd love to hear about that because we're in a room full of actors and performers, yeah. SAG, after. Um, and we talked a little bit about, about it backstage. That, you know, you're only seeing it from your point of view. You're seeing your scenes and you're not necessarily experiencing the scenes of, of, of everyone else. And then right. it all gets put together and then you kind of follow along as it goes along. I'd love to sort of hear about that experience because I always find that interesting, the process, like you said, from filming the scene on set, you know, to the, what you see as the final product. I mean, you learn quickly. It's, you know, the, the, I remember, I, you know, I'm older, but... <laughs> I remember going to rushes at, at a theater and having wine and crackers and cheese and watching. And it was such a, I, I liked that communal aspect of shooting. You go work hard and then you get to hang out with everybody and watch the dailies. It was such a cool event. Um, we don't do that anymore. And in fact, I don't know if studios watch dailies anymore. I, I'm really, I, partially because of the medium. You know, we're shooting in digital. So you're, you've got, you know, 10 times more dailies because, you know, they'll run the camera for as long as they want to. They don't, you know, when we shot with film, we took more care. Yeah. We didn't waste film, you know. So the dailies, there was less. You took more care setting up the camera. You took more care rehearsing the shot because it was film and it cost money. Now, you know. That's my criticism of, 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 of digital, is that we don't spend the time rehearsing. Right. We don't spend the time making the shot perfect. Um, um, but there's great things about digital, too, where you can play and you can, you can explore. And, you know, it's digital. Who cares? I'm going to do it this way. I don't care. <laughs> if you don't like it, don't use it. But then, you know, so you go through all this thing and your, your experience as an actor, as you know, is, is on set. You know, it's a great experience. I like these people. What we did was great. It was beautiful, right? Yeah. But then you see it sometimes and you're like, how? Oh, what happened? <laughs> 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 or my criticism of, of a lot of things, and it, it, it goes across the board, whether it be an independent movie or a, a, a network TV show, is just, I like things to be patient. Just be patient. Tell your story. Don't cut. <laughs> Don't cut. Use it. You know, use the close-up when you want to use the close-up, when it means something. So, you know, 
I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to watch things. <laughs> That's why I watch the news, <laughs> which is cheery and it really makes me happy. <laughs> but it's reality. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the, um, I mean, you mentioned some of the cuts and some of the, uh, there is some amazing uh, cinematography for, you know, especially for like a network show. My God. Pilot? Yeah, my gosh. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, talk to us about just the location that you filmed in and um, how, you know, just all of that and how it sort of came to be. Yeah, it, it, the pilot is really high production value. Yes. And I was blown away. I mean, we got to, uh, we were on Vancouver Island, which is a, is a, is a beautiful, beautiful place. And um, a lot of things are shot up there. You'll recognize it from certain uh, movies. And I've been up there twice. Um, but um, uh, yeah, the, the pilot. And then, and then, so you create a pilot. You know, you, they give you a little more time, a little more money because they want it to be good. And then you got to sustain that tone. You got to sustain that, that level, of, you know, that quality level. Right which is difficult because then you go on to a schedule where you're working eight days to shoot a show. And that's, that's hard. You know, that's a lot of material, especially if, you know, there's a boat at night, you know, <laughs> or a gun, you know, gunfight or, you know, a car chase. Yeah. And I think sometimes uh, people forget that it's like, well, that's just, you know, one eighth of a page. <laughs> yeah, but it's a boat at night. I mean, that's going to take you all night. You know? Yeah, do you get scared when you see the, the all caps? You know what I mean? All those <laughs> action scenes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Wait, is it raining at night? Uh, <laughs> that, you learn that fast, too. It's like night, night, rain, Re pass. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer the uh, but it's scene great in the house. Movie. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> how much, um, say, uh, how much influence have you had over this particular um, production? In terms of, I like to think I had a lot of influence, <laughs> <laughs> or at least they make me feel like I have a yeah. lot of influence. I'm, I'm very vocal. Um, Rick Gomez and I work together a lot. He's my deputy. He's a brilliant actor, um, great writer, like amazing guy, and we tormented them daily <laughs> with ideas. Uh, we were rewriting stuff, and hey, what do you think of this? And like, what if I don't say anything? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> But yeah, I was, you know, my theory is, and I, I, I kind of became the producer. I mean, as far as people coming into town, you know, uh, I've, I've been a plumber on shows, you know, the people that come in and work for three days and guest star. And a lot of times when you're shooting a show and you're busy and you're working 14 hour days, you know, these people walk into a world that is, is nerve wracking. Yeah, they, yeah. you know, they have to all of a sudden be a part of this thing that's already going and, I took a lot of extra time and effort to make sure that those people were handled properly and welcomed and all that. You know, it's a team and, you know, you are responsible, um, whether you like it or not, if you're, especially if you're one on the call sheet to, to create the tone of the show. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I over prepare, <laughs> you know, I, I don't bring sides to set. And, and hopefully others follow suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when we're in a world that we don't rehearse, don't bring your sides to set. <laughs> you know, we don't have time to learn lines, <laughs> you know. Um, so anyway, you know, I put, I put a lot of effort into trying to make it a, a just, I mean, if you're going to be away from home, away from your family, it's, at least it should be fun, you know, even if the movies or the show stinks, you know, have it. You know, it's out of your control. Well, that's, I mean, that's the interesting thing. I mean, you mentioned the pilot. How much time was there between um, the, the shooting of the pilot and then sort of them see, kind of coming shot in? It being... In March, April, April, May, June, July, four months. Yeah. And then you're just at the behest of some, some studio exec somewhere screening it for, for different audiences, right? And deciding whether it's even worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. And then they pick it up and then you give them the best 125%. And then it's in their hands. I mean, it's a great thing about this art form. It's the most collaborative art form, right? I mean, truly. And then, you know, people don't realize you, you're such a small part of it. You know, you're just kind of the mixers of the cake. And then, <laughs> and then you hand it to somebody else and they take it in the kitchen. And hopefully it's at, they set it at 325, not 425. <laughs> you know? I mean, but that's the beauty of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it really goes out of your hands. The only bummer is that you know, if it really stinks, and it's, <laughs> it might be your fault, but 
even if it's not your fault, it, if someone can't remember the show, right? They go right. like, "Hey, what's the name of that show that sucked?" <laughs> and it's like, uh, I don't, I can't remember. Is that Steve Zahn show? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man. Do you follow along? I mean, so it, so it airs uh, officially tonight at 10 p.m. It's yes, going to be on uh, Mondays at 10 p.m. Do you follow along with? Because there's so much. My gosh, social Getting media defensive. and stuff like that. Do you follow along with no. any of that? No. It, it must kill you. You know what I mean? To even like try. No, I don't. I, yeah, I don't do social media. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, but, it's um, smart because it's sometimes. And I mean, but, and I don't read. I read one review. I didn't even get through the whole thing because it wasn't <laughs> even a review of the show, and it was a really good. It was a good magazine, but they, I was like, it was more of a, cr a critique of. T television today. <laughs> okay. I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I, what do you think of the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but ultimately, I think, I think audiences are so smart now. I mean, TV is where the stories are being told. The really good stuff. Oh, my gosh, amazing. Yeah. And you don't need gimmicks. People can see right through it. And there's plenty of examples of amazing shows that take their time and are really good. Yeah. You know? So hopefully... I mean, I can't guess what the heart, the pulse of America is. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, who if, can? If there is one, oh yeah. <laughs> there is no pulse. Yeah, we were saying. Yeah. We're all zombies walking around eating each other right now. <laughs> no pulse. But, um... Well, like you said, I mean, there's, yeah, no one set, <laughs> we, hopefully, there's no one in the industry or in the business, right, that sets out to make a, a bad product. You know what I mean? It's all about no, how yeah. things go, you know, and it's all these people. So it's no one's one's, one's fault. No. You know what I mean? That's why it's so interesting to see all these different things. And like you said, TV is an awesome medium for that. You know what I mean? Including the digital, the streaming and, and, and different forms, you know, you're seeing all types of great work um, across the across the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, I mean, really, I, I, I'm shooting something right now, like a six episode miniseries up in Vancouver. Nice. It's called uh, uh, Valley of the Boom, about the internet boom in 94, yeah. 95. It's crazy good, <laughs> you know. But that's the challenging stuff. I mean, yeah. it used to be movies, you know. It used to be, you know, bread and butter was like $20 million budgeted movies. They were left and right. Nowadays, they're kind of gone. Yeah, yeah. It's either a million dollar budgeted movie or like 150. <laughs> yeah, and nothing, nothing in between. between. It's weird. Yeah. But it's all on TV. You know. Yeah. You want to talk about time travel? That's yeah, my segue. Yeah. There's one. Um, we have some uh, fun questions from. That's it, literally it. Um, we have a question from the audience. Before we move on, because I want to talk a little bit about your start uh, in acting. You know what I mean, and then how you've gotten to this point. But this is a, a pretty specific show question. How do you interpret the concept of time travel personally? This is from uh, Helen. <laughs> what is your opinion on time travel? Well, I think it can, it's impossible. You think right? it, you, it, it can't? You can't do it. Yeah, I think I think I think it's impossible. But you talked to NASA; they said it was close. No, they said. <laughs> I think they can kind of. I don't know. My mind won't. I mean, I can't. I can't even understand infinity. You know, like yeah, the yeah. space goes forever. Like that's crazy. Right. Like how do you? How how does that? I'm just a simple guy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't it be cool? I mean, come on. Would you go if you if you could time travel? It's impossible. I would if you, f f forward in the future or or backward in the past. Well, I lost a really cool hat in a cab like three months ago. <laughs> nice. I would try and travel back. I'd waste it. <laughs> you would do that basic. And I'd go like, back and go. Oh, keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that a lot. That yeah, or like when you miss the subway or something, you're like, oh, if I had just yeah. just went a if little I bit didn't faster. Stop to like look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you could just go back, you know, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, wouldn't you go back to Gettysburg? Like, no. No. Two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> or like that high school dance or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a concern for me, the time travel thing. I, I, I said, look, I don't like using the term time travel to, <laughs> to describe my show. Because it immediately, everybody has their like, oh, time travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like we're solving mysteries in the past or something. <laughs> like, and I asked the writers, hey... The pilot's amazing. I assume this, but just just verify that I'm not going to be time traveling <laughs> <laughs> to, to like the Wild West or something. Like, no, I'm like, okay, cool. That's like see, that's at least season four or five. Yeah, you when know they what I mean? run when they out start of to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have to go oh into the future God, to stop yourself horrible. in the past or something. Yeah, you know something what I mean? just weird. <laughs> My mom would call going, I don't get it anymore. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> 
Tell us about, because um, again, we are all uh, actors in this room and we're here in New York and, you know, you started um, in Minnesota, you know, uh, doing professional theater out there um, at an early age and then eventually made, made your way to New York where you did a bunch of theater here. I'd love to hear just uh, your start, this the kind of spark that got you going and then and then how that sort of translated into your early career with some 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 notable, uh, some notable uh, awesome actors here in New York. Um, yeah, new, uh, I grew up in Minnesota. I was college college small liberal arts college there and I, I did a trip to london this is the the birth of it all and i, I just never thought of it as a career really uh, it was just something i was good at doing and, and i loved um but i i it was i i saw i saw les mis and it was the original cast and i was by myself it was one of those trips where i could like make my own credit for college kind of thing just watching shows oh, nice and i remember i was sitting there watching them and i got so excited because it's i was like i know that i'm as good as that guy right there <laughs> the guy holding the flag man i can i know i'm that good and but it was cathartic and i really got excited i thought i know i know that because i was always like i, I could never you know and then once i saw really good theater and that was really the first time i saw really good theater it was the west end and then i went home and i dropped out of college and and <laughs> ended up working in a machine shop, which was horrendous. But no, but I went to, I was in plays in Minnesota and I got advice from guys and they said, go train. I auditioned to, I, I got into uh, the American Repertory Theater at, uh, in Cambridge, uh, their program back at the beginning of that program uh, was basically the old Yale. Uh, Bruce Dean and, and uh, all those guys. And that was a really influential uh, point in my life. I, I, that company there was amazing. I worked with Cherry Jones numerous times. And, uh, you know, as a, as a young Minnesotan kid that didn't know much, I was pretty brilliant. You know, I met uh, uh, and then went to New York and, and moved here and, and did a lot of theater back. I moved here in like 90 and you know, and then met uh, Ethan Hawke doing a play and Jonathan Mark Sherman and, and uh, you know, uh, Bob Leonard and, and, you know, Sam Rockwell. All, you know, all those guys were all, we were all part of this, you know. They weren't, uh, Sam was in, 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 in Malapart, which is the company that we started. But, um, but it was that kind of crew, you know, it was great. And, um, and then slowly started doing movies and, and um um, yeah, it's been a while since I've done a play. It's kind of been embarrassing, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. And then, and then, uh, but I've always been a New Yorker and then I, I live in Kentucky now, but we, we kept moving further out of the city. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like, you know, I still commute, but it's from a, a, another <laughs> state. Come from Kentucky. <laughs> well, West Central Jersey. Yeah. We yeah, used to yeah. live in the, in the Delaware Water Gap. West Central Jersey to some New Yorkers is just as the same it as is. Kentucky. It's yeah, like yeah, Utah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, we had kids, and then, you know, after you have kids, it's over. <laughs> so you don't go in the city anymore to see anybody's show or, you know, go to restaurants. You just talk about it. And then finally you go, why are we here? <laughs> nice. Yeah, so. Tell me about the theater company, though. I mean, it is funny to, or it's interesting, not funny, to hear, you know, about actor, young young actors like yourself and Ethan Hawke and the, the other names you mentioned, you know, all kind of hovering around the same area at the time and then eventually kind of connecting. Um, so I'd love to hear how that how that started, what, you know, whose idea was it? And I know you were like one of the co-founders well, of it. Ethan and uh, Frank Whaley and uh, Baum Leonard, those guys really started started it. Ro Ro um, um, Jonathan Mark Sherman, great writer. Yeah. Uh, we did a play at Playwrights Horizons called uh, Sophistry. Um, uh, with, and then, um, God, Dick LaTessa and um, uh, Chris and Calista Flockhart was in that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Anthony Rapp. Yeah, my guess. It's just great. You know, you're just young people and, yeah. and, and then, you know, down, years down the line, you're just like, wow, you're just so proud to be a part of all, all that. <laughs> but that was a really cool thing. And then I don't know if, I, you know, I was asking someone today, I don't know if that, if that exists today. Does yeah. Naked Angels exist today? Does, do, 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 are they still around? You know, do, do, can people, do, do they start these theater companies? Can you afford to rent spaces and... You know, <laughs> that's a whole, whole different question. And I was yeah, like, no. <laughs> I'll bet you it's happening. It's just, you know, uh, yeah. It, but it, I'm just 
not cool anymore and I don't know what's happening. It, 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 it comes down to the spaces, like you said, because, uh, you know, the big companies that started back when, you, you know what I mean, back in the day have, have taken over those spaces, you know, and then right. you're kind of stuck with the, you know, the black boxes of the world and then the smaller theater companies that are doing new works and things. But I feel like it's just harder to produce, you know, because of the money right. um, standpoint, you know, yeah. so there's not as much indie, I mean, there is, and and please, and we all know, I, I mean, I, we I'm go sure see it. sure there is, because yeah. it'll always be there. Exactly. I just didn't know if it was like, is it in Jersey City now? Because, it, you know, like we rented a theater on 42nd Street. Yeah, see, right down yeah. from Playwrights Horizons. And it was like an old burlesque house that, and it was great. I can't remember the name of that place. But it was cheap. I mean, it wasn't cheap, but, and all we did was we produced young American playwrights. That was it. Yeah. And, we, and, and then the other thing that was important was it was a $10 ticket. So you could be poor, young artist in New York and go see a play. And it was really cool. Yeah. It was really inspiring to be a part of that and be a part of that group, group of guys. We still talk about it. Ethan and I still go, hey, we should do a road trip where we just do, uh, in Dairy Queen parking lots, we do, <laughs> swear to God, <laughs> this is the greatest idea of all time, by the way. <laughs> Dairy Queen parking lots, gotta be a Dairy Queen in small towns, and we do Godot. Nice. Right? You'd pay 10 bucks for that, right? Come no, on. no, no, oh, free, free, free. We free. just start doing it. <laughs> How cool would that be? Like, people would freak out. Oh like, my a gosh. Duke of Dough? It's kind of perfect. Yeah. I think that's, a, that's an idea. You I know what I mean? I'd be forced, we gotta... but if I did that, I mean, it would just be too long. And like, what are you guys doing? You're not getting paid? <laughs> What are you insane? Well, it's so interesting. Again, you're producing new works. You're 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 fostering the careers of like you know new actors, new playwrights, new directors. New, you know this whole new crop, and it eventually then led to I mean all of you guys, uh, you know all of you actors, um, moving on to your next things. I mean, because wasn't it because of that those early uh, and correct me if I'm wrong that or those early productions that led to eventually Reality Bites, which was your big, um, you know, one of your first big ones, and then you know kind of you know snowballed from there yeah i mean yeah. it was all very gradual and I, I, there's I, I mean i can't even trace it you know i just did work i was so happy to be in anything whether i was making money or not making money or whether it was an audience or not it was a play reading at the public or it was a, a friend's reading or it was a small play here or, or a, wow i got in a movie or i did a, you know an under five on a soap and paid my rent yeah i just i just wanted to act that's it you know, and I, I talk to young actors now, and I'm just like, oh, what should I do? I go, act. <laughs> Make sure you act. Don't talk about it. Don't plan on doing it. Do it. And don't think that any venue is better than the other. Yeah. You just don't know. You know, you don't know who you're going to, you know, connect with. And For then sure. all of a sudden, you start something, and, and then it, you know, it breeds from there. You create your own path. It's, yeah. it's incredible. You know, and I, I still feel like that same guy. Yeah. I really do. No, and that's a great sentiment. I mean, because you, you hear a lot of actors talk, and they go, you know, go on their long things, but just, you know, just do it. Stop talking about it. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like Stop asking know, questions I'm about it. I'm a writer. It, great. Well, what do you, you know? Yeah. I have this screenplay. Well, do you have 10? <laughs> You're a writer, right? You should have a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Not one. <laughs> My, the cab driver has a script. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a cabbie, you know, like that. <laughs> Oh, I'll get it made for you. No problem. <laughs> I can't get my own shit off the ground, but uh, I'll definitely get your cabbie movie. The cabbie movie. movie. <laughs> cabbie movie followed by... Do you want uh, a million? Two? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. Yeah. We have, um, I, I'd love to keep this sort of train um, of thought going just about, uh, because we do have a couple other questions and only a couple more minutes Six left. Six o'clock flight. Yeah. <laughs> 6 a.m. flight, guys, and he's here. Come on. Steve's on, everybody. Give it up for... Yeah. It's not that hard. <laughs> um, this is this is from uh, Carrie in the audience um, who'd like to know what kind of role. This is interesting because I was going to use this as a segue anyway. So um, you started off, you know, with very those, you know, the young high school type roles, and then there was a, a nice switch. Um, I think I love uh, Happy Texas is one of my favorite movies. There was a great switch there where you, you know, you started to take on some of the darker stuff. So this kind of goes along with this a little bit. What kind of role would you love to tackle that you haven't yet? So I'd love to hear about like that switch, and then what in the future also um, something that you'd be interested in um, continuing or pursuing or trying again. I don't know. It's weird. I mean. A role that I haven't really, I feel like I'm, I, you know, it's, it's weird other people's perception of you yeah. and, and what they, and so many people think I'm like a comedic actor and I am. I always try to find the comedy and stuff, but, but, but I'm, 
I'm rarely in a kind of a crazy comedy. I never get offered those, and they're so fun to do. I love doing them, but I never get them. Yeah. You know, I've done like three out of whatever. Um, I don't know. I'd like to go back to theater and do some really cool stuff, some, some parts that, you know, you dreamed of doing when you were young. And now all of a sudden you go, wait, I can play those parts now. Yeah, yeah. I can't even, you know, but like, like those um, classic. I was going to ask, you know. yeah, like more um, slice of life type uh, dramas or, you know, uh, more classical or musical. Classical, musical would be great. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you do the monologues <laughs> of when you were young and, and, and they weren't your type. It didn't matter. You're doing a monologue. Oh, you do, you know, you do Richard the Third, and you, you're like, I'm like, yeah, I can't play Richard III now. You know, <laughs> actually, I'm too old to play Richard III, but, um, but uh, you know, it's that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. And then finally, um, from Daniela, um, we, we touched on this a little bit, and you started to give some, some words of wisdom, if you will, but um, a general kind of what inspires you, and then what are the challenges, what, what are some challenges that you faced or some challenges, you know, that you feel like helped you grow um, as an actor, as a performer, as, as an artist? Um, w w what inspires me, other actors really inspire me. Good actors inspire me. That's the thing. Yeah. Getting on set and, and finding people that are just listen and like, you know, Rick Gomez, like, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, he was my partner in the thing. Say, I mean, you know, some days you just don't want to be there. You 13 hour days and you just miss home and it's raining and thank God for people like that. You know, uh, that's what, that's inspiring to me. My friends, uh, and people who aren't my friends that <laughs> I love that. Um, challenges. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I was uh, I'm dyslexic. I had a lot of trouble in school for a while. Um, not crazy dyslexic, but um, to the point of where it was um, difficult for me. Like I, I feared reading aloud in, in class. I still. I still do. I mean, as actors, we all hate read reading. So plays, right? Your screenplays, like we're gonna do a read through. <laughs> I'd rather be naked on film <laughs> than do read throughs. Yeah. I really and I and I rehearse them. I read them aloud, and now I'm fine. But I still had that fear. Yeah. But that but that problem that I had, and that fear that I still have makes me work harder. It really does. It makes me um, work on my material really hard yeah like i i know it you know that kind of thing well you said you come in you come in prepared you like to come in prepared yeah and i mean you expect everyone the else idea to. of going and doing like saturday night live where they rewrite it an hour before <laughs> and reading it as you're on stage that 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 to me is terrifying yeah <laughs> you know that would be that would be really not a good thing <laughs> so so you'll never see steve's on on, uh, well, on know. snl <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you for being here. You can see him in a, par a Dairy Queen parking lot with Ethan uh, Hawk coming yeah, soon. Yeah. Um, just yeah. random spots yeah. throughout the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, Star of the Crossing and Air is Monday on ABC thank at you. 10 p.m. Please get up one more time for Steve Zahn! <laughs>